The wait is over. After 14 years, Tops is back with a brand new NBA set. Now let's dive into everything you need to know about 2023-24 Tops Chrome NBA basketball cards. The last NBA basketball set from Tops was 2009-2010 with some very good notable rookies, Steph Curry, James Harden, and Blake Griffin. Now Tops started making basketball cards in 1957-58 and it featured one of the best basketball players of all time and his rookie card, Bill Russell. But after that initial release, they didn't produce basketball cards in the 60s, but they started back up again in the 70s, technically the 69-70 season, and that featured Lou Alcindor, aka Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's rookie. They stopped making cards again after the 81-82 season because of declining interest and competition. Then enter Shaquille O'Neal and 1992-93, they started again with a Topps release and Topps Stadium Club, a premium release. 93-94, they introduced Topps Finest, which was the first premium chromium type release, and they invented the refractor. 96-97 was also the introduction of the Topps Chrome release for basketball cards, and it had the refractor, and that was a game-changing card. 2009-2010 was the last NBA release for Topps, and that was a historic set, so they have been out of the game for 14 years. But here we are, they're back. And while Topps currently doesn't have NBA licensing to put on their cards, that means no team logos, names, or official jerseys. They have secured the NBA licensing and the NBA Players Association licensing for the 26-27 season. And rumor is they're trying to acquire that faster. So this is almost like an introduction to Topps Chrome from a fanatics perspective. Now let's check out some of the details from the upcoming release. The purpose of this video is just to provide information for you because I haven't been able to find many informational videos, a few people talking trash, but not a lot of information. So I'm just gonna try to guide you and show you where you can find information if you're interested in buying this. You can go to tops.com and they've got these ripped articles and it'll tell you a lot about it. You can go to Beckett and look up 20. 324 Tops Chrome Basketball. There's a lot of information there, including the checklist. And you can also find the pack odds on tops.com. They have had small windows on fanatics.com where you can buy like monster boxes and things like that, but they're currently sold out. Also, a good place for information is X. Scrolling through X, just type in Tops Chrome Basketball. You can find info on the blowout forums if you can navigate through the trolls. And there's always information on Reddit. We're going to start out by looking at the base design. Uh, first off, I, I believe this is the base design. It's got the borders that are similar. See the little stars down here in the corner? The borders are similar to the baseball card tops chrome release. However, the background is a, a bright, geometric, colorful design. Personally, I think they should have just stuck to the exact same design as tops chrome. They should do all three major sports basketball, football, and baseball with the same design. So there's continuity across different sports, in my opinion. And it does make it a little bit tricky that they don't have the licensing. So they have to put players in a, in a particular pose so that it kind of hides some things. There are about 30 different refractors. These are all colorful, different designs. Of course, we have Victor Wembanyama has rookie cards and on-card rookie autos because Fanatics did secure the licensing for Wemby. So this is the only place you can find Wemby rookie autos and they fetch a pretty penny. LeBron James also has autographs in here. Now this is a, a very coveted autograph. He has a Fanatics exclusive license. This is only the second time that he has signed something for Fanatics. The first one was just a one-on-one with him and Bronny. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Shaq. There's all kinds of Hall of Fame autographs in a Topps chrome finish. Bunch of different insert sets. We'll touch on some of those. This is the season's best, which I believe is retail only. In a hobby box, there's eight cards per pack, which is twice as many as Topps chrome baseball. There's 12 packs per box and 12 boxes per case. The set size is 190 cards. And in a hobby box, you're gonna get two autographs, three coast to coast, two destiny, two finesse, one season's best, one youth quake, three negatives, three prisms, and one refractor. Here's a list of all the parallels and it'll also tell you what format you can get these from pink refractors are exclusive out of blaster boxes and pink basketball refractors the geometric cards are out of breaker delight boxes only but a vast majority of the parallels are found only in hobby boxes you can scroll through the checklist on your own but what i'm interested in is what kind of autographs there are in the 1972 autos there's 59 cards those are one in 51 hobby packs but this is a big one lebron james autos he's got time machine autographs there's super fractors and red autos. He's got a gold refractor checklist, which has black, red, red geometric. See, these are only in breaker boxes. 
and superfractors. Then there's certified autographs. These are available only in retail, and we don't have a list of who's on that checklist, but I imagine it's probably not gonna be the best format for autographs. And the more I look into it, retail doesn't look that good to me. 39 certified rookie autographs, one in 14 hobby packs. So a lot of rookie autos coming out of here. Future star autos only come out of retail. Then the Topps Chrome autograph checklist, there's gonna be a lot of these, there's 97 cards. Those are one out of 141 hobby packs, different kind of refractors you can get out of here too. I'm just going to highlight some of the names that you might not be thinking about that have autographs in here. Anthony Hardaway, Bill Walton, who recently passed on, and that's a Trailblazers autograph. There are some legendary Hall of Fame type autographs. A couple guys who have passed on that are going to be highly collectible. Bill Walton, we got Ben Wallace, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, De'Aaron Fox, David Robinson, the Admirals got autos in here. George Gervin, Jalen Rose, Larry Bird, LeBron James, Grandma Ma, Larry Johnson, Spreewell, we got Giannobli, Paul Pierce, Stoyakovich, Rip Hamilton, Robert Parrish, Sean Kemp, Shaq. Of course, Wemby, he's got multiple autos across different formats, different styles of autographs. Wemby's got an auto in the certified rookie autos. I'm going through the 1972 autographs a little bit, 59 card checklist, and I noticed a few things. Got Bill Walton autos out of here as well. David Robinson, Dominique Wilkins, Hakeem Olajuwon, Jerry West, that's amazing, he's passed on. Larry Bird, Mo Cheeks, Meta World Peace, Ron Hartest, Ray Allen, Vince Carter, and Wemby. So Wemby's, yeah, multiple autographs. And as far as inserts, like I said, there are several that are retail only. DNA checklist, film study, power boosters, round ball royalty, sudden impact but in my opinion the best inserts come out of hobby format expose helix let's go radiating rookies is going to be really nice and rock stars along with superfly so if you go to tops.com the odds you can check out the odds for all this stuff and let's just scroll through this and i'm going to comment on some of the things that i noticed first of all the base card refractors are coming out of about every format refractors aren't very rare one out of two hobby packs you're probably going to get a refractor per blaster box but look at all these exclusives all these parallel on the left over here are hobby only. You can get a super fractor out of retail, but they're real hard pulls. And the greens, as usual, come out of retail. Youthquake is hobby only. Look at all this hobby only, hobby only, hobby only. I mean, there's like pages full of hobby only stuff. And then you get into some of these retail exclusive inserts, which I don't really care about. Let's go super collectible. Expose super collectible. I talked a little bit earlier about the Breakers Delight exclusive, and there's some really cool potential here with the geometric cards. Geometric purple, one out of every Breakers Delight box. Every other has a gold. One in three has an orange, and one in 14 has a red. So there's gonna be really low numbered exclusive stuff coming out of the Breakers boxes. And from what I've seen online, the secondary prices are about the same as a hobby box for now. Those will be more expensive. I predict they'll they'll go way up in price, the breakers boxes, because they always do. So you may want to pre-order those, but I don't know for sure. Frozen fractors, only out of hobby boxes. Frozen fractors, if you don't know, are numbered in the negatives. It's supposed to be like uh, freezing cold temperature in the negative degrees. So they're numbered out of negative five, and those are going to be super collectible. Radiating rookies, another one, super collectible. And I'm coming from the baseball side of things. So going crossing over from baseball to basketball, radiating rookies, frozen fractors, all these extremely rare inserts are all going to be really collectible. One in 486 for Helix, one in 486 for radiating rookies. So you'll find those in roughly one out of every three cases. And one of the biggest draws, the LeBron James time machine autographs, basically the LeBron autos. They're really tough pulls, but they come out of hobby. The only ones I see that come out of retail at all is there's going to be like a very, very rare LeBron James gold autograph that you can get out of a regular blaster box, value box. And the red geometric only comes out of the Breaker's Delight. Now the initial market reaction for this product has been a little bit of both, but if you judge it based on sales, the pre-release that Topps had on tops.com was initially for $269 for a hobby box. It sold out so fast that it bogged the website down. They also had these monster boxes, five packs per box, 10 carts per pack, exclusive blues, come out of here, randomly inserted autographs, rarely, but these sold out almost immediately when they were listed on Fanatics and they were listed for 60 bucks. And if you look at the most recent sales on eBay, this gives you a really good idea what the market is for this stuff. The blaster boxes are selling for like 75 bucks. A hobby box, 550 bucks. These monsters are selling for 105. So just from an objective standpoint, there is a lot of hype around this product and people are paying twice as much as retail 
to try to snag some of these things. There will be people at the stores, Target, Walmart, wherever they're selling this stuff, trying to snag these immediately off the shelves and flip them and make a profit. So there's like a 2X markup if you can find these at the retail shop and you wanna flip them. But like I said, I don't think retail is really the way to go. I think hobby boxes, they are very expensive, but hobbies seem like the better option. To wrap things up, there are pros and cons to the release, just like there are for every release. The biggest cons, in my opinion, are the lack of licensing, obviously, and the design is okay at best. There are a lot of pros for the release, though. There are a lot of reasons to buy it, and you can see that with the sales, the initial sales, and the hype. People are gobbling this up as fast as they can. The reason is Victor Wembignana exclusive rights to his autographs. It's the only place you can find Victor Wembignana rookie autographs. We've got on-card autographs and Topps Chrome on-card autographs. Huge ceiling, not to mention LeBron James autos. Those are highly sought after. And some of the other Hall of Fame autographs, some uh, players that have passed away have autographs in here, legendary Hall of Famers. And like every release, there's pros and cons, but I want to know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.